Today, listen to the voice of our God. Harden not your hearts as in the desert, when at Meribah and Massa you challenged me and provoked me, even though they had seen all of my works. Good evening. Welcome to the Daily Office. Thank you for joining me. This is Night Prayer for Saturday, August the 24th. It's the feast day of St. Bartholomew the Apostle, and the scripture for this service, Psalm 141, and Acts chapter 25, verse 13 to 27. Our help is in the name of God the Most High, the maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, source of all being, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses. Grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, come to my assistance, make haste to help me. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, I cry out to you, make haste to help me. Alleluia, Psalm 141. Alleluia, I cry out to you, make haste to help me. Bend your ear to my voice and hear me when I cry. Let my prayer rise before you as incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth and guard the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to do any evil thing, to practice wicked works with them that work evil. And let me not eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous smite me it shall be a kindness, and let them reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for my prayer is continually against their wicked deeds. When their leaders are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth, as when one cuts and splits wood upon the earth. But my eyes are on you, my beloved God, in you is my trust. Lead me not destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own traps while I escape. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, I cry out to you, make haste to help me. Alleluia. The lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 25, beginning at verse 13. After several days had passed, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to welcome Festivus. Since they were staying there several days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man here who was left in prison by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me about him and asked for a sentence against him. I told them it was not the custom of the Romans to hand over anyone before the accused had met the accusers face to face and had been given an opportunity to make a defense against the charge. So when they met here, I lost no time, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accuser stood up, they did not charge him with any of the crimes that I was expecting. Instead, they had certain points of disagreement about him, with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Since I was at a loss to investigate these questions, 
I asked whether he wished to go to Jerusalem and be tried there on these charges. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of his imperial majesty, I ordered him to be held until I could send to the emperor. Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you will hear him. So on the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and entered the audience hall with the military tribunes and the prominent men of the city. And then Festus gave the order and Paul was brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all here present with us, you see this man about whom the whole Jewish community petitioned me, both in Jerusalem and here shouting, he ought not to live any longer. But I found that he had done nothing deserving death, and when he appealed to his imperial majesty, I decided to send him. But I have nothing definite to write to our sovereign about him. Therefore, I have brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after we have examined him, I may have something to write for it seems unreasonable to send a prisoner without indicating the charges against him. Here ends the lesson. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O God of truth. Keep us as the apple of your eye, hide us under the shadow of your wing. Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Let us pray. Accept our evening prayer, dear God, and the lifting of our hands to you as our evening sacrifice. In you we place our trust, for you will not leave us destitute, nor ensnared in the traps of the wicked. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Alleluia. O oh, tender God, you have seduced me, and I was seduced. Alleluia. And the almighty and merciful God, the source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.